Hello my schoolers, this is my school channel and my name is Abiola. For this video lesson, you are going to join me to tackle the Jam CBT Pass question for the subject physics the year 2022. Do not go anywhere, stay with us and we will be right back. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for this video lesson, you are going to join me to solve questions 21 to 40. So let's kick off with question 21. The vapor pressure, okay, so what happens to the vapor pressure? Does it increase as temperature increases or it decreases as temperature decreases? All right, so we should know that vapor pressure increases, you know, as temperature increases. You know, when you increase the temperature, you know, for instance, you are, you are trying to boil some water. Right? As the temperature of the water rises, we realize that a lot of vapor, you know, gases are being formed. They are trying to escape. You know, that's where you now see steam you know, coming out of the water. So you can see that as you increase temperature, the vapor pressure increases. However, this um, increase right, is not linearly. So when you see the word linearly, that means straight line. Because if I draw the graph of vapor pressure against temperature, the graph is not a linear graph. It's not a straight line graph. You know, it is something like this. It is curved, all right, basically. So the correct option here is vapor pressure increases non-linearly with measuring temperature. So option A is the correct option. Question 22. The potential energy in an elastic string of force constant K, which has an extension S, is what? So if you recall um, Oak's law, you, know, you are looking at um, the concept whereby, provided that the elastic limit is not exceeded, you know the extension produced is directly proportional to the applied force. So you are looking at the relationship between the force applied F and E, the force applied and the extension produced. So if you now recall that the work done or the energy stored, right, um, regarding a particular material, okay, so we're talking about a, str a string here or a, st yeah, a string to put. So right now you want to recall that this um, expression is actually your average force, you know, average force, which is IF, right, times your extension produced, right, so FE. Recall that your force, okay, remember that we have our F, right, equals to KE. So what do we have? So that will be F, right, times, okay, F now has been replaced by KE, so I have KE times this E. So what do I have? I have half, right, I have K, E times E, I have E squared. So you just need to recall the formula then we do an application. So this E is the extension produced and right there it is replaced by or it is represented by the letter X. So I have half K X. So this is actually gotten from the relationship between the force applied and the extension produced from your Hooke's law. Then if you recall this, then you have your average uh, Average uh, force applied and extension produced, then you just replace it by this value, then you get this. So this is just a mathematical expression put together. So the extension E is being represented by X here, not E. So you see the same thing. So where do we have half K X square? We have that in option C. So option C is the correct option. Number 23. A reservoir is filled with liquid of density 2000 kilogram per meter. Alright, so calculate the depth at which the pressure in the liquid will be equal to 9,100 newton per meter square. So given that gravity equals to this. So uh, if you want to record the relationship between um, pressure, right, pressure is actually equal to your height or your depth, right, then times the density, you know, um, certain presentation we put like this, something like letter P, but it is not P. So let me just use D to represent um, density right here. Okay, and then we have your gravity. So this is a relationship. So the question requires that we find the depth or the height. So this is what we are looking for. So if we make H the subject of the formula, what are we going to have? We are going to have P over DG equals to H, isn't it? So we are looking for the height or the depth. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, um, some, uh, I think some articles or presentations or some textbooks will represent your density with something like this. All right, so it's like P, but it's not P. So I don't want us to confuse it with that's why I'm using this. 
G. So uh, let's put in the supplied value. What is my pressure? The pressure is actually 9,100. Uh, <laughs> uh, 9,100, of course. Then what is the density? Density is 2,000, right? Times the gravity, which is G, that is 10, right? So 0 cancel 0, 0 cancel 0. So I have 91 over 200. So 91 divided by 200 will give me 0 0.5. 455 meters. So the depth when we have this experience is found in option D. So option D is the correct option. 24. Water is not a good thermometric liquid because it was. So uh, basically, if you look at um, liquid in glass thermometer, you know, we are looking for a liquid that, um, you know, its volume responds to temperature, right? So, but that is not really uh, prevalent with water. It's not something we can associate with water because we have what we call the anomalous behavior of water. You know, between zero degrees Celsius to four degrees Celsius, water contracts. And that's why you will not see that high is actually floats on water. So, um, very, very funny behavior regarding water. And again, if you notice that mercury is actually used instead of water because water will wet the glass. Mercury does not wet glass. All right, so when it comes to the context of water not being used as a thermometric liquid, right? Uh, you know, you want to look at the fact that um, it wets the glass, it responds to temperature, you know, it's quite poor, right? In measuring temperature, you know, these things have to be very sensitive to temperature change, which we can't really find, you know, with water. Then again, we know that water has a um, high freezing point, you know, in comparison as well. Then we can also tell that water does not maintain a fixed density. You know, um, for instance, if you compare the density of ice to water, you can see that it varies. Even though we are talking about the same substance in different states. All right, so um, right here, instead of having expansion, you have contraction, you know, it's contrast between 0 and 4 degrees Celsius. So I feel the most appropriate should be to wet glass. Option D is most appropriate for this context. Question 25. Which of these is a second class lever or a second class order or a second order um, lever? All right, okay, so. Um, you have to first know, okay, the first order, the second order, the third order. So the first order you are looking at examples like your claw armor, you know, like your plier, um, you know, like your crowbar, right? If you look at that um, arrangement, you realize that the first thing you want to have contact with, you know, you'll be talking about your load. For instance, look at your plier, you know, you have your load right here, right? Um, then you now talk about your fulcrum, then the effort. This is where you're applying the effort, you know, to actually grip whatever material that has been stuck in the mouth of the plier, right? So these are first class. This is third class, all right? So this is actually an example of a second class lever. So another example is your nutcracker, you know, where you have the load in the middle. So the correct option is option D for wheelbarrow. Question 26. In the formation of sea breeze, wind blows from where? All right, so when you look at um, the sea breeze, the land breeze, just as the name implies, you know, sea breeze, that is the um, wind coming from the sea to the land. Because during the day, you realize that um, the ground is being heated up, right? So the air there is hot, so it rises, of course. So you will now see that the cool breeze, you know, from the sea will replace what you have already on land. So that one has already gone up, right? Then the cool breeze from the sea comes to replace. Then at night, you know, the reverse happens. So definitely, the formation of sea breeze is when wind blows from the sea to the land. All right, so where do we have the correct option? We have that loaded in option D. So option D is the correct option. Number 27, which component of fiber optic connector has a provision of entry for the fiber along with the position to connector housing? So basically, we are looking at a coupling device, or you can refer to it as a fiber optic um, coupler. Alright, so what this does is that um, it's just an optical device, you know, probably you want to merge um, a single, you want to merge one or two inputs into a single output or you decided to um, split a single input into two or more outputs. So that is where the coupling device comes in. So sometimes, based on the functionality, you can refer to it as, um, you know, a combiner or a splitter. All right. So basically, the correct option is option A for coupling devices. Don't forget that it is very important that you have a Jam CBT simulated experience. All you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the MySchool website. 
So right here you get to download the My School Mobile app for your Android devices or you can go for the My School software for your computers and your laptops. So join me as I tackle question 28. In order to view the sun, the most suitable instrument to use is what? So the most suitable is of course the heliscope. You know, you want to observe the sun and the sunspot. This is what you use. Um, telescope, you know, you want to view um, distant objects, right? You know, in the space, outer space, right? So the stro stroboscope, uh, you are talking about rotating speed, right? Then the sun meter, you know, or sometimes it's called the solar meter. You know, you actually want to measure the intensity of sunlight. You know, that falls on a particular surface, probably in the context of, um, you know, this solar power regarding household, use, uh, household usage and the like. So the correct option is option A for the helioscope. Do not forget that you have to hit that like button. Click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification for you to get alert immediately we upload the next video content. Question 29. The eclipse of the moon occurs when? Alright, so eclipse of the moon is when the earth comes between the sun and the moon. All right, the eclipse of the sun is when the moon comes between the sun and the earth. So don't get it mixed up. You just need to practice. All right, so what do we have of the right uh, combination? You know, the eclipse of the moon occurs when the earth comes between the sun and the moon. So where do we have that? Um, we have that in option C. The earth comes exactly between the moon and the sun. So you can have um, a form of eclipse, either partial or full. So, the correct option is option C. Question 30. The gravitational pull on the moon is one-sixth that of the Earth. It's one over six of that of the Earth. So, if a body weighs six new thing on the moon, what would be the weight on the Earth? So, um, basically, if the person is weighing six new things on the moon, then that means it is times six on Earth. Right, if the person is weighing, imagine if the person is weighing 30 on Earth. So, so what would be the weight on the moon? That would be 1 over 6 divided by 30. So, if the person now is weighing 6 newton on the moon and is now coming to the Earth, it will just weigh times 6, you know, of whatever. So, that would be 6 newton times 6, that is 36. So, the person will weigh 36 newton on Earth and weigh 6 newton on the moon. So, the correct option is D. 31. The amount of energy required to change a kilogram of ice block into water without a change in temperature is what? So, um, look at the keywords that we have here. A change in kilogram. You know, we are talking about a unit mass, right? Then also without a change in temperature. So, this is where specific latent heat or fusion comes in. And in this context, we are talking about ice. Right, so uh, basically, if you look at the concept of um, specific latent heat of fusion, you know, you're actually changing the unit mass of a solid, right, into liquid, right, without a change in temperature. For vaporization, you know, specific latent heat of vaporization, you know, uh, for vaporization, you're looking at um, change, you know, from liquid into vapor, right. So the correct option is option A, specific latent heat of fusion of ice. So A is good to go. 32. Which expression gives magnetic flux? So when you talk about magnetic flux, you know, um, the units, you can use Weber, right? So we are looking at um, that rapport between the amount, you know, of magnetic field, right, which travels, you know, perpendicular to the area. Okay, basically that's just, so we are looking at the relation between magnetic field and area. All right, so the B stands for the magnetic field, then A, the area, then we have cos theta. So the correct expression here is actually B, A, cos theta in option C. Number 33, the graph of pressure P against the reciprocal of the volume, right? Inverse of volume in the Boyce law is a what? Is a straight line curve passing through the origin. All right, so take note of that. So the correct option is option D for a straight line. Question 34. What quantity of heat is required to convert 20 grams of ice at 0 degrees Celsius to water at the same temperature? So given that specific latent heat of ice is 336 joules per, uh, per gram. Alright, so take note of the units being used. So right here we have joules per gram, not joules per kilogram. And right here I also have in gram, not in kilogram. So there's no need for conversion. So basically, if you record the rapport between the heat change or the quantity of heat, that is actually equals to um, the mass times the this times specific latent heat, right? So basically, you just do 20 times 336. It's going to give me 6,720. So if I bring it to standard form, 
and we have um, 6.72 times 10 to the power 3 joules. You know, it is measured in joules, so the correct option is option C. 35. A train of mass 1,600 kg attains a speed of 25 meters per second in 20 seconds. The power developed in the engine is what? So you just have to recall the proper formula, right? So we know that uh, power is actually worked on over time taking, but you can also take power, you know, equals your force times velocity. So right here, we call that force is actually mass times acceleration. Okay, and we know that acceleration is actually change in velocity, you know, over time taking. So already we have a V standing here, isn't it? So when we multiply through, so we just have M, right? We have V times V, that is V squared over T. So just impute your formula. The mass is 1,600. Then we have V squared, that is 25 times 25, right? Over the time taking, that is 20 seconds. So when I divide this, I have this here, I have 80. When we multiply it through, basically we should have um, 50,000. Okay, so 50,000, or if you want to convert to kilowatts, you know, for power, it can be 50 kilowatts. Kilowatts, kilo is 8,000. So 1,000 times 50, that's 50,000 watts or 50 kilowatts. So that's the correct um, value. So let's go back to the screen to secure the correct option. So we have that. Option D is the right option. Number 36, the main factor which affects the speed of sound wave is the what? They are the properties of the medium. All right, so uh, first we want to consider what is the temperature that we are talking about. You know, temperature actually influences um, the speed of sound wave, not the source of the sound wave. As well, you want to consider, you know, other properties like um, the elasticity of the medium, you know, the density of the medium. So basically, the properties of the medium is very essential. You know, the property of the medium is very essential, you know, to the, if, so, you know, regarding the effect or how it affects the speed of sound wave. So the correct option is option A, the properties of the medium. Question 37. A semiconductor is formed by what? By covalent bonds, you know. You want to look at typical examples like your uh, silicon, like your germanium, you know, you, found, you find these in group 4 of the periodic table. And um, even though the presence of a four valence electron, you know, these electrons are not really uh, free to move like that. So basically, you want to know that um, semiconductors, they are formed by this, the covalent bond. So the correct option is option D for covalent bond. 38. One of the following is a scalar quantity. So while we are looking at some um, scalar quantity, we are talking about magnitude but no direction. So vector quantity, we have magnitude and we have direction. So examples include your weight, your momentum, your displacement, and what have you. So uh, energy generally, you know, we take energy as a scalar quantity because it is. So the correct option here is option C for potential energy. Question 39. The mercury column in the barometer at notational atmospheric pr uh, pressure has a height of what? So this is just uh, a basic fact. You know, we are talking about a re reference point. All right. So um, that should be 76 centimeter at sea level. So some presentation can tell you 76, um, 760 milli millimeter. Right. So, but because we are using centimeter, right? So if you convert, of course, you should have 76 centimeter at sea level. So this is the correct reference point. So option D is the right option. Question number 40. An object just begins to slide on a surface inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. So the coefficient of friction is what? So you just need to record the formula. The coefficient of static friction regarding an inclined surface is just tan theta, right? And the theta here is 30 degrees. So tan 30 in short form is actually 1 over root 3. Or you can put probably, if you want to express it in degrees, you know, 0 0.524, you know, thereabouts. So the correct option is option D for 1 over root 3. So we've come to the end of this video lesson, but definitely we have interesting uh, content to come as well. And all you just need to do to keep informed is to always hit that like button for us. Click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification for you to get alert. Immediately we upload the next video lesson just for you.